Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm joined by my guest, Dr. Stephanie Canestrero, who is a functional medicine practitioner through the world-renowned Institute for Functional Medicine. She's a chiropractor by trade and amalgamates the two worlds with very unique approaches to help her patients attain ultimate wellness. Her passion for helping others recover from chronic conditions relating to gut-brain connection comes from her own personal battle with brain-based inflammation that stemmed from a serious undiagnosed gastrointestinal issue. She now uses her insights to help eliminate symptoms of any gut-brain associated diseases or just increase overall vitality using advanced functional medicine testing, individualized supplement protocols, lifestyle medicine, acupuncture, soft tissue techniques, and mind-body techniques. So Stephanie, that is a a really amazing bio, and I'm wanting to start off by you telling us a little bit more about your story. So what was this kind of confusing, unknown condition that you had? And tell us a little bit more about your story. Yeah, so I would say I, I always start with when I'm much younger, because I think it's important to kind of highlight the way it kind of started, which not even going into all the breastfeeding and all of you know, those really important factors, but I was always really unwell as a child in to the point where like my, my skin was rashing up and peeling off in layers. I couldn't have like plastic diapers touching my body. Like they had to do cloth. And this was in the eighties. I had to drink from a glass bottle cause I reacted in my mouth. So, you know, you saw these like kind of underlying things that, you know, now you and I maybe know how to even start to address with little babies on how to help them and give them a better kind of chance of having like a healthy adulthood. Um, but so fast forward through a lot of, you know, gastric distress or like gastrointestinal issues in my younger years to the point where, you know, when I ended up in university, I was almost having like bouts of incontinence and like just really awful, like stomach cramping. And, you know, I couldn't eat anything kind of getting to that um, point where nothing really just multiple food sensitivities. Um, and then, you know, fast forward even further to chiropractic college. That's when I got really sick, you know, when everything kind of amalgamates with a lot of stress was going on. I had helped my grandfather um, get this surgery and then it, the surgery almost killed him. Like we got him in quicker and, you know, I felt like it was my fault. So all of this stuff came crashing down and I, I, I was in student housing that maybe wasn't the best um, quality and I think all and my diet was off so I think all of those things came together and I started getting severe neurological symptoms um, to the point where I was getting sense of impending doom panic attacks um, half of my face fell asleep you know like drooping like face one day bulging eye the next day creepy crawly feelings all over my body like these deep aches in my legs and then it turned into like stroke like symptoms where I was rushed to the hospital thinking I had a stroke. Um, you know, I was injected with gandalidium and all of the CT scans came up clear, you know, you're not having a stroke and no one kind of looks any deeper. They kind of send you home and then my my symptoms got worse and worse to the point where I was tentatively diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And then, you know, that's when I started my functional medicine journey. I got fed up with, you know, the rounds of testing that were getting me nowhere and even like the no hope that they give you with their suggestions oh well it's probably multiple sclerosis they found some specs in my finally when they finally started actually investigating because at first you're told it's stress and you're told it's this and you're told it's that and no one's tying in my my gastrointestinal symptoms and not absorbing nutrients and actually seeing my food in my stool and like being incontinent with what that you don't absorb nutrients and then maybe that's going to affect your nervous system like none of that and i even brought that up i was i was in chiropractic college like i was being educated and it's just anyways so this this whole frustrating kind of um story kind of led me to um a ted talk which kind of changed my life it was minding your mitochondria by dr terry walls and that's what started my journey into functional medicine you know, simple things like changing my diet and finding out that, you know, I had celiac disease, which was in my family. I had asked to be tested for and wasn't tested for. But now what are the underlying causes that, that leads you to celiac disease other than genetics? Because I don't even buy that you have to have the gene for celiac to get the damage that, that happens to your microvilli. Um, 
but you know, and so what did the, what was the dizziness? Well, I had cerebellar ataxia from cross reactivity with my cerebellum um, from the, the gluten looks very similar to cerebellum. So I was having this autoimmune attack on my body and, you know, it got called the wrong thing, which could have led me down a path of being medicated for my entire life like no one addressing ever the root cause. And then as I went into my actual functional medicine training and followed mentors, you know, I'd say the biggest game changer for my health was finding out I had these parasites and passing these parasites. But uh, that was all throughout. I've been hospitalized numerous times for salmonella. I had been hospitalized for Campylobacter. I was going to the washroom just blood. Like my gut microbiome was devoid. Like it was weak. And that's why all of these things could kind of come up. But the underlying thing, or one of the main ones, and I think I had them since I was a baby, and that's why I talked about it, were these these parasitic infections. And now working with my parents, they have them too. I could have, they could have been passed even from that. And so anyways, that's kind of a long story, but, and I've missed so much, but just, you know, the kind of common story that you and I hear from our patients now is just this frustration and this like, like pandemic of chronic disease that, that it all kind of sounds similar or it just becomes these like um, seemingly unrelated symptoms that are all very related. So I think that's what we'd like to draw it back to. Definitely. There's a time and a place for, I understand why there is like specialists in gastroenterology and endocrinology is like, yes, yeah. it's definitely needed, but they take it too far that they, don't then look at the whole body as one and it's really yeah. sad to think that there are these people who are just in that medical um model just kind of being passed around waiting six months for an appointment paying tens of thousands of dollars to try and get some answers when there mm. are answers out there and i can relate to some of the symptoms like it wasn't as extreme as what you were dealing with but especially the multiple food sensitivities and the reactivity yeah um neurological type things I've definitely experienced that as well and I also believe that parasites have been playing a huge role so who was it or what was it that put parasites kind of in your your path like what was it that brought them to the light that it could be a factor to look into well I had gone through like multiple different antimicrobial protocols you know we found candida we did that and like I would get temporarily better but still like not ever like still feeling kind of vulnerable I didn't know when my stomach would be an issue um and it wasn't honestly until like 2017 or 16 whenever Cellcor which is a company that I use and I'm pretty sure that you do as well correct um and I I they only had a couple products at that time and someone's like you know you should try the mimosa pudica seed um and, and sorry, that's not true. I had done some other like typical kind of parasite protocols, mm -hmm. but again, like wormwood and all of that, but th those, you know, again, short-term effects, but never like that kind of long-term. And I'd say that um, because I, when I did the, the uh, mimosa pudica seed, I actually like visual, visually saw some parasites and worms and liver flukes. I had lots of liver issues that I had sent me to the hospital as well with that right upper quadrant pain and so when I started passing those that's when I regained my health like to a point where I don't feel vulnerable like I don't have to be doing a cleanse or being so careful with what I eat other than obviously gluten but it was um really kind of a game changer for me and then what I could offer to my patients as well so I'm on month three I think two or three of my parasite cleanse so mm -hmm. how quickly did you start to see results almost immediately mm -hmm. um I like I think para one is very very beneficial um for those that have like a more diarrheal symptoms like and so really it helped me a lot with that because it's that sticky gelatinous kind of material it kind of um turns into after you take the capsule and it kind of slows in some people and this isn't for every and anyways it was almost like within days i saw my first parasite that i passed and then um you know but immediately i'm talking within days my bowels started to regulate and i thought okay maybe it's just when i'm on this and when i go off it'll come back and it and it didn't so i would say within days but it's different for everyone and when i did it there wasn't phases like i just started mm -hmm. with 
like uh, the mimosa pudica seed, the, the other, the para two, which is a different blend of those um, herbs, and then the binder. And, you know, even just having the binder, because I had done parasite cleanses in the past, and they, I mean, they would use things like clay or, you know, um, activated, activated charcoal. charcoal yeah. But because, the, like, I was having systemic symptoms and those don't exit the actual gastrointestinal tract, um, I was, you know, really detoxing hard on those ones yeah and it's good that you don't have to like schedule your full day around eating taking your binders taking your exactly. other supplements that was just it's made yeah. so much of a difference having those binders yeah. that you can take with or without food i know it's amazing <laughs> and it's... i've struggled with mold as well so the the biotoxin binder like parasites mold bacteria from it's like the amazing. brain as well not just the gut so no. i i'm obsessed with the products as well it's they're amazing they they've been game changers the technology that or like just their science along with the the clinical background of the the doctors that run the company it's just i, I think agreed and i have i don't know if the podcast episode with dr todd watts is going to be released um before or after y'all so it will be linked in the show notes if so because we did a deep dive into parasites um, yeah, so I just wanted to chat about your experience, but when people hear parasites, they think, oh, that's nothing that I'm dealing with. Like I've never been out of the country. I don't even have digestive symptoms. Mm -hmm. So what could be some indicators, indications that you might have parasites? Yeah. So they can be pretty stealthy. So other indications that aren't gastrointestinal, like um, some people get constipation and then diarrhea or they get diarrheal symptoms, but some don't at all. And it's more like symptoms like, you know, restless sleeps, tossing and turning, um, drooling, um, bo like lots of boogers in your nose. Like people think they have chronic mm -hmm. like nose infections, um, grinding your teeth at night, uh, symptoms that worsen around a full moon, um, you know, low B6, like people that have been diagnosed with low B6, low zinc, people that have like upper neck pain, neck, like joint pain. And that was a huge thing for me because I work with athletes. So, you know, being able to share with them that like you can make your joints feel better because I have a manual side of my practice and I could feel the difference when something's going on like deeper than, you know, they do use their bodies a lot. Like you can feel the difference in joint and people's tissue, the way it feels like, and even for myself, like joints were a huge issue for me like and parasites can have different life cycles in different parts of your body including in your muscle tissue right so it can cause aching and different aches and you know even liver symptoms and gallbladder symptoms because parasites like the liver and gallbladder um so, like i had a blocked cystic duct with what I think was the, that's where the liver fluke was because, and I, and it had caused me to be hospitalized with acute pancreatitis, which, you know, they want to, they want, all they want to do is take out your gallbladder and my pancreatic enzymes. I was digesting my own pancreas. Mm -hmm. That is a 10 out of 10 pain. And that was uh, from parasites. So um, gosh, the list goes on and that's the thing. So, I mean, I, I think that everyone should do at least one parasite cleanse. Mm -hmm. I mean, Agreed. I just think, it's yeah, like we're in such a toxic world and our whole relationship with parasites have changed because our, as our gut microbiome gets weaker um, and as we are exposed to more stress and chemicals and our food quality goes down and, you know, we have that loss of touch with nature and grounding and, and, you know, all of that wreaks havoc on our, on our actual gut and all of those things that make our gut strong, like the healthy bacteria, they're getting wiped out. And, you know, and then these, these more pathogenic species can kind of overtake our, our, our guts. And we start to get symptoms, not, not always in the gut, but like systemic symptoms or symptoms, migraines, right? There's another one. Mm -hmm. Like there's parasites that are known to cause migraines. Yeah. There's we're now finding like an association with different parasites for multiple different autoimmune diseases, or even, you know, we know, we already know some bacterial infections are associated with like rheumatoid arthritis or certain ones are, are, are associated with ankylosing spondylitis or all these inflammatory arthritides and more and more research is going into like the gut and, and how it, every kind of chronic issue is kind of tied to it. So yeah. 
And Dr. Todd said, if you've got a pulse, you've got a parasite. And I totally <laughs> agree with that as well. Exactly. I totally agree with that. So but in what order everyone... would you address them? Like, is it something that you go to straight away just to kind of knock out the big, the big offenders and then yeah, deal with so... the bacterial overgrowth and all of the other exactly. things? Exactly. Exactly. Even like, again, I had someone and they had chronic Epstein bar. They they by the time they saw me, they were on their like fifth cycle of it becoming like an, a chronic infection becoming acute, and no one had addressed like the bigger parasites. So you have to kind of start there. They harbor the virus. They create. They lower your immune system to let these other viruses you know overtake. And that 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 speaks for the famous virus right now. Like if we strengthen our gut, if we do, if we use this time in lockdown to clear out parasites people are stronger against, mm -hmm. like I know myself, I was the person who was always sick. If there was a stomach flu and I was around the person, I got it. If there was a flu, I got it. I haven't been sick and I have to touch wood in <laughs> years, in years, in probably four or five years since I've done these things. So, you know, I can say I'm like, I feel like a completely different person, but now working on, and you talked about which order we're, we're addressing these things we're addressing parasites but now we know before we address parasites we're working on the mitochondria people used to wait to work to like fuel the mitochondria well all of our gut cells or everything has a mitochondria so for our liver for us to detox we have to support that and you know you want to start slowly with that but and and working on drainage and getting people's like clearing toxins better getting them pooping by any means like because that's part of our detox but we want, that's why you're working on kidney and liver detox and, you know, drainage. So just opening those drainage pathways, make people have like where my first parasite cleanse, I was bedridden for like the first three days, even with the clay, like we're working on like lowering the toxic load. So binding, I'm binding first, like, and I'm not even just using biotoxin binder. A lot of the times if people come to me and they have like, Oh, I, I've been told I have heavy metals before, or we do a test for heavy metals or whatever. I mean, we know that most people are harboring some sort of heavy metal. So, you know, sometimes I'm starting off even with more than one binder, depending on what I know about the people. And, um, and then because even when I first started, because I didn't even understand the products, I started with HMET binder mm -hmm. and Thirad Chem, which are, <laughs> so I didn't strong. even know. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't even know because I'm like, Oh, okay, take these, take these. And like, so it was a bit strong, but I mean, it, it obviously helped. And I feel like most people are okay with like a few days of not feeling the greatest in order to feel like how I feel now, which is like a complete contrast. Um, but anyways, so we really want to work on that drainage. Then we want to really get those bigger parasites. I, I, I kind of go after parasites. I get H pylori if I find it kind of, uh, in and around there. And then we're going after like the smaller viruses and all of those other co-infections and, and retroviruses, you know, mm -hmm. they now are finding out each parasites associated with a different retrovirus. So that's been huge. And I use like some really good products for that as well, along with all of the cell core products, but just very thankful for all of these companies that are helping me help other people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I only came across Cellcall in the past year. I don't know if they it like really up. hooked. Yeah. They, yeah. I don't know if they like really went for it on social media because I was started seeing them everywhere. And it's like one of the main companies that I use now because I just love it so much. And mm -hmm. I've done again, same as you, 50 different gut protocols in my life. Yeah. And within three days of taking the just power one on its own. I literally had to pull a worm out of my butt. <laughs> yeah, I know. It sounds, people get, get scared and it's so gross, but it's so like, it's like an exorcism. It's like, exactly. Do you know it what I mean? It pays off. Like, yeah. I spent all of this money and time. I want to see some changes. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I want to know that it's working as gruesome as it is. And I, I yeah. knew that it was going to come, I knew that it was going to happen. Um, but actually seeing it for yourself is quite an experience. It is for sure. Do you have any other tips for handling like a detox reaction? So some people say like any symptom that you're having, it shows that you're pushing it too hard. You need to back off. You're doing too much in terms of like a Herx reaction. Whereas other yeah. people say you have to go through a healing crisis in order to get over that hump and actually heal. Yeah. I think it depends how sensitive someone is. Cause obviously you can't push some people very much at all. A, a lot of the people I'm working with are generally healthier. So I can kind of 
push them a little bit and I, I increase the binding is one of the biggest things like the binders like you know and there's for certain people there's no kind of upper limit sometimes of what they can use in the short term um, and so I'm doing a lot of binding I'm using the oxygen and the minerals um, which are from Falcor a lot um, you know sweating if they can um, but I'd say that like increasing binding for me and sometimes adding in a heavier binder but in mm -hmm. a very small dose even like has been a huge um, game changer. And what about with diet? Do you make any drastic changes to diet during a parasite cleanse? Are your patients already pretty healthy, so you don't really need to do much? So, no, I'm making changes. I'm definitely getting them off, like, like processed carbs. I'm always going like lower carb, more like paleo. I'm really explaining food science. Like, I'm talking more about quality uh, than you know, really getting into. I don't like making huge changes to diet. If I have people that are pretty, really sick, I know that they have to go on something really anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. along with the parasite um, cleanse. I usually have them start that and then add in the drainage stuff because people even detox just from changing their diet depending on how toxic it was. Um, and I use the binders in that at that point in time as well but sometimes like I get on my first call with someone and I'll have them change their diet while they're waiting for the supplements and then slowly add the supplements in because I do end up working with some um, like chronically ill patients like myself a lot of them are like I work a lot with NHL players uh, so that's the National Hockey League which is a you know big deal in North America um, and then I, um, I, their wives or their family members, their wives, family members, this and that. So it like, you know, cause it's this, people are sick. You can't get away from it. So I really enjoy working with people of both, like from both populations, because, um, I mean, obviously I was really sick and I'm just wanting to not people to not go through that. And do you ever see like these healthy athletes, like seemingly healthy on the outside, but you do a still test and they have like tons of infections? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it's shocking. Like, I mean, now I, I think I'm known in the NHL for when guys have like diarrheal symptoms because these guys aren't, they're performing at a high level, but they are no means healthy. They're, they're starting to get more and more uh, like autoimmune diseases are showing up in them. They have a lot of stress. They are on the road. They're on in planes. Their food quality can be off, you know. Um, they're over over intervened with like medical interventions like painkillers and all of that that ruins their gut so there's a lot of work to be done with them and it's it's been like so fulfilling How, the guys I see um, when they're in their off season and we really get to work on everything and then seeing them each off season as they like kind of stick to protocols and do things throughout the year and stick to the diet like their whole body feels different like they feel better than they did when they were 18 and playing and they're 25 you know so they're they're passing and some guys are having some chronic like back pain low back pain caused by parasitic infections because their bowels are inflamed and if you just look at the like how close they are to each other or maybe you know like just the unhealthy gut in general that makes the rest of your body more inflamed like you have that more inflammatory um cytokine side yeah, because your, like the epicenter like your gut, the middle of your body, kind of the center of your being isn't healthy, that's going to have a knock-on effect on every other system. Yeah, and so I started doing parasite protocols with them shortly after I started using Cellcor when the, the company first came out. So, and before that, I was already doing antimicrobial and, you know, so even the changes I've seen with them has been and like they're writing to me on the full moon now. They're like, gosh, the moon really gets me, you know. <laughs> but how did you pitch it to them initially? Like, I doubt that they're aware of all of these kind of natural health um, websites and products and things. How did you like get them to believe that they have yeah. parasites? Or were they so just willing to was... give anything a try? No, well, it, you know, it started off with one player who's, you know, the kind of biohacking type, like he wants to do anything to get an edge. And this does give them an edge. So he was one of the, the my patients I was seeing for like, I do acupuncture, soft tissue, like the adjusting, all of that. And like his body was a mess. Like it just didn't feel good. He was like 23. And it felt like, you know, I don't know, 
I don't know if you can put an age on it because it just felt really inflamed. Um, and so he was really like ready to go. And he had all these like little tools that he was, had, like, you know, a biomat and this, that. So he was like really open to hearing about it. So he, and he had, you know, and I became really open about my story, like, uh, uh, you know, on like about my stomach, my anxiety, the sense of impending too. And they're like, oh, well, I get anxiety too. And like when I wake up, my stomach's sore. And da, da, da. So because I was already close with them, I'm treating them for an hour at a time, multiple times a week. Um, you know, they start to listen to my story and they're like, oh, I want to do that. So, you know, I tested that person. They had like candida overgrowth parasites were even showing up, which we know only like what, 8% of parasites show up in stool testing. Yeah. And so when you see them actually there, then you know that there's more than just that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I completed a stool test the week before I passed the worm and it came back clear. I know. So you know what I've been doing and it's been showing up more parasites is I, for people that can handle it. Cause like I said, a lot of the people that I'm working with are on the, on the healthier side. They, I, I do some biofilm disrupting mm -hmm. for them and then I feel like I'm seeing more. Okay. Or like on the GI map stool test. Yeah. Or just with the cell core protocol that you're doing the parasite cleansing. No, the, the, um, the GI map. So I'll have them on like a really high dose of minerals to okay. like, break up some things, some, some essential oils, stuff like that. And then I'm starting to see, like, they're coming up more, like more than one in the red, like in the parasite mm -hmm. section of the GI map. Um, but the GI map gives me so much other information yeah. and I just assume there's parasites. So it's, and they only test seven anyways, right? Seven exactly. parasites, five worms. Mm -hmm. um, Out of potentially thousands. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So we know we're missing them, but it's okay because we're going to go after them in a way too. And, and you know, something else, and this was from Dr. Todd Watts. So you might've already, he might've already said this, but I had someone react so bad uh, to the parasite, like really bad um, to the parasite cleanse. And so they went to their doctor and he kind of was interested because they brought him one of the worms and it was one of the thread worms. And he put them on a, on a, on a pharmaceutical like dewormer, which I know Dr. Todd Watts sometimes uses in the States. And it was a different one than he uses. And so that kind of cleared out a bunch. And then now we're working on it more and they mm. feel so good. So, you know, okay. time and a place for. Yeah, definitely. It must have been pushing things too fast. You just needed something different and then go back to them. And then they were ready to, ready to come yeah. out. Yeah. And we weren't even, I mean, we started off and sometimes, and this is another thing that maybe Dr. Todd talked about, sometimes you can start off too slow and they need, you know, you, you need to really kind of get them instead of just stir them up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even sometimes in people, and I don't know, sometimes it's just like a intuitive feeling or, you know, maybe they're clinically like similar to someone else, but adding in the pair of three right away sometimes, um, which is usually kind of later on and like doing pulse mm -hmm. dosing. So like a high dose and then not doing it for a few days, you know, it has been powerful sometimes as well. Yeah. I'm excited to hear like all of these clinical pills come out from all these practitioners who are using the products um, mm -hmm. because the company is designed to be for the very sensitive, like the sickest people. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's either... a great, a great thing that you don't have to be kind of looking if there's any gluten hidden in the products or are they no, they're completely this issue? Clean. Yeah, I really love the, the stuff and I'm personally going to, and I think you are as well, going to at least once a year doing a parasite cleanse for forever just because yeah. we do that to our pets. People are used to like deworming their animals. So we, we need to do this to ourselves, especially if we I know, especially people who have and, pets too. Yeah, yeah we eat sushi, eat pork, have mm -hmm. pets. Like their pets are licking their face. Like, you know, even like swimming in rivers and lakes like in, in Canada, I same with mm -hmm. um, the UK like there's just tons of exactly we're trying to do all of these healthy things getting outdoors but even taking your shoes off and putting them in the soil you can get I things know. through your feet through your feet yeah <laughs> not to I freak know. anyone out but this is just how the world yeah. works unfortunately so, and and the, it's as long as you're working on your gut and your gut is strong and like diet obviously I talk about glyphosate a lot because you know it really does cause a pathogenic microbiome mm -hmm. it it like glyphosate which for people who don't know is roundup and roundup um is it less in the uk or is that i think so yeah yeah because in north america we're not doing so great with that but um 
it actually utilizes the way that it inhibits um, certain lower plants and lower like weeds and different um, different pests is through this shikimate pathway. And it gets, and we don't use that as humans, so that's why they say it's safe for us, but our good bacteria do use that pathway. So it kills off preferentially our good bacteria, whereas the bigger parasites and certain other pathogenic bacteria don't use that pathway. So it's actually like tipping us towards a, a pathogenic microbiome. So more of those inflammatory um, bugs than, than the good ones that protect us. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, like diet's obviously really important. Um, and there's a reason to eat organic. Exactly. Yeah. And they're like, they don't affect the human cells, but we're more bacteria than we are human. Exactly. They forget that little important part. <laughs> I know, I know. And, you know, you talk about women's hormones and, you know, I, one thing I didn't mention about my own symptoms, and it, I just feel it easier to bring it back to myself and then people can relate. Yeah, absolutely. They have people symptoms. look, yeah. Yeah. But I had 10 out of 10 cramps, like the worst cramping, like I had, you know, when your boobs are like engorged and so sore, like even right after ovulation all the way till uh, menstruation and, um, and Tudka, because <laughs> I keep going, talking about cell core, but working on my liver, getting rid of those parasites were the first step. And then Tudka brought it even, because the way I did it, because I used the, 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 the protocol before there was a protocol, Tudka just came out not mm -hmm. too long ago. It was like last year. Um, and when I took that, because I take everything new that they come out with, I mean, that's what cleared up, like, I can have no cramps, like, mm -hmm. by working on that, like, liver detox, and, you know, because my liver was blocked up for so long, um, and so, you know, getting rid of parasites, and there's parasites that I found, like, working with some doctors in, in um, the U.S., they actually were testing for parasites in the vaginal microbiome, um, and then doing some working along with them with the parasite cleanse I was on lowering toxic load and then they were doing a few even antibiotics sometimes um I had just like a 44 year old naturally get pregnant um you know by clearing these parasites so they really do like impede multiple systems exactly. so and I have I have people get getting pregnant all the time I now really tell them during this parasite cleanse mm -hmm. and they're not meaning to they are one girl had like was the one with Epstein Barr. She had awful Epstein Barr, uh, like you know. And we were working on her parasites, and she was obviously passing them. And, and like, I, you know, she'd been through it time and time. Like this was the one she's gone through six cycles of like her chronic EDV becoming acute, and she's passing the parasites. And then she got pregnant during the parasite protocol. And this is not just one. Mm -hmm. I've had multiple. Mm -hmm. so, so what's the connection there with you know, gut health um, and hormones? So is it just that they're kind of stealing our nutrients, causing leaky guts? Well, and same with the liver. Why did the Tudka really help your, your cramps? So, I mean, if you think of detoxing hormones, and even one of the things that you look on on the GI map is like beta-glucuronidase as a marker, right? Mm -hmm. So beta-glucuronidase is an enzyme created by uh, strabolome is what they're calling it, but mostly an inflammatory kind of um, microbiome and this enzyme. Um, so our liver does all this work to, uh, you know, inactivate these hormones, for instance. So estrogen, our body uses it, but then it has to be um, detoxed. So it goes through phase one and phase two in the liver and phase three is excretion. And we don't excrete that estrogen when we have too much of that enzyme beta glucuronidase. So now we get a recirculation of estrogen and that leads to estrogen dominant symptoms, which are the symptoms that I, that I spoke about. So anything that you can do to help your liver detox better um, and, you know, get be less inflammatory because when I, when I talk about stealth infections with people, so people that don't feel that they have gastrointestinal symptoms, but they have all of these like PMS symptoms or infertility and such, like when you have these stealth infections, your body is pumping out cortisol all the time and it's on high stress, right? Like it's not, it's never in like that resting state where anyways that our body wants to care about sex hormones or care about getting pregnant. And um, so you, your body isn't focused on creating sex hormones. It's created, it's working on fighting off parasites and infections and things that are lowering our immunity and creating inflammation. And anything that's going on the gut in the gut is 
transcribed into the brain through the vagus nerve and through different chemical receptors. Um, you know, we have little dendritic cells that are always testing what's going on in our, in our gut and that, and it's sending chemical receptors to the brain. And then the vagus nerve is, you know, is what I named my clinic after because my vagus nerve was a complete disaster, like, you know, low vagal tone, which means it's not working as it should. And your vagus nerve is like the rest and digest side of your nervous system. Um, and it's, it's responsible for your well-being. So 80% of the information, the vagus nerve is taking up to the brain. And then the brain is acting on the rest of the body based on what's going on in there. And if it's, if it's at high alert and stuff's not going on there, your brain's not sending signals down to your ovaries to ovulate or to mm -hmm. make, you know, it's like, it's more in survival mode. So you, the more you're lowering inflammation, lowering toxic load, you know, draining liver and kidney drainage, the more you're getting rid of these toxins and these parasites and all these things bogging you down and working on creating a balanced microbiome, then the healthier the host is. And then that's when, you know, sex becomes important again, even sexual drive becomes better as we get rid of these things. And then, you know, and then pro the ability to procreate, you know, becomes uh, something your body is categorizing as important. <laughs> yeah. Your body, when your body, the body's healthy, body's healthy, it's fertile. That's just kind of the fundamental thing. Your body wants to reproduce. So when that's not happening, obviously age mm -hmm. needs to be taken into consider here, consideration here for women. But there's obviously something getting in the way. Um, mm -hmm. And I do want to talk a little bit more about the vagus nerve because we haven't, I've mentioned it here and there on the podcast, but I wanted you specifically to chat a little bit more about it. And I've mentioned this before, but the, um, the brain and the gut kind of were developed from the same tissue um, and they kind yeah. of split apart and the vagus nerve is what co uh, connects the two. So apart from the things that you just said, so the cleaning up the gut infection and the parasites, stress management, what else can we do to support the vagus nerve? Um, so yeah, I go into little different ways that you can activate the vagus nerve, but First, I just want to mention also that our gut is like our second brain as well. Like we have more nerve endings in our mm. gut than we have in our spinal cord. So, you know, it's not called our second brain for no reason. Um, so, you know, that's sending information up to the vagus nerve and only 20% of the information is coming from the brain to the actual gut. Um, so there's different ways of activating the vagus nerve, but when it comes to, um, when it comes to, taking care of it from a perspective like externally there's it's it's kind of limited but we're having huge huge success with people and these are all things that i came up with by myself because i was like on an airplane having extreme anxiety because i felt like i was going to have to run to the washroom so i know acupuncture and i happen to have toothpicks on me that are like lined with like tea tree oil and so I know that the vagus nerve is external in the tragus and I know, you know, and I start tapping these places um, and I start tapping like here and I start mm -hmm. tapping like on, on my hand right here. And I start tapping even um, on your shin, just like where your bone is for your, your, your fibula. Um, maybe we can outline that in the notes and um, tapping there, like, so that it actually like hurts a little bit. It has to like, you know, create some and like over here or anywhere over your vagus nerve. Um, I was able to calm my stomach down and calm, stop myself from having an anxiety attack. So, you know, that just kind of shows you the power of the vagus nerve because even now they're doing medical implants, which is obviously invasive surgery, which we don't necessarily want anyone to have to do, but just this implant kind of pacemaker like thing. And they, people can stimulate their own vagus nerve in a, in a stronger way than obviously tapping with a, uh, uh, a toothpick, um, they're, they're passing parasites and they're getting less joint inflammation mm -hmm. and they're getting like, it's, it's from the other end, like clearing up infections. So that's how powerful the vagus nerve is. So any way that we can turn it on, um, we're going to work on, um, enemas are huge because they have that huge, um, vagus nerve connection to the, uh, hepatic portal kind of uh, liver, gallbladder, all of that drainage system that highly activates, and because the vagus nerve is 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 responsible for the downward downward movement of the bowel, the migrating motor complex, 
or peristalsis it's called. Um, so that one's huge for regulating that. And, you know, some people are constipated and that's not good vagal tone. And some people are spasmodic like I was, and that's also not good vagal tone. So it can go one way or the other and stress obviously, um, you know, decreases your your vagus nerves so anything that to do with meditation which i'm not so good at i use things like aids like meditation aids like um like brain tap because it's it has something on my ears and over mm -hmm. my eyes so like uh and then i i put my legs in a chi machine and this is one of another chiropractor that i went to see for treatment he actually did that treatment for me so it, it and it was like a really good guided meditation and it's they have binaural beats in it as well. So, um, you know, it's activating through your ears, your, your vagus nerve, and then the lights are actually red light that is activating your vagus nerve. Um, so, and then the legs moving and then I can get, cause you know, I'm, I'm just being honest. Like I am not like really great at getting into like Zen meditation. Like I really try and I really do want to get there, but any way that you kind of can, um, so I mentioned binaural beats and meditation. So if you're better at that than me, then just like quieting down your body for, um, you know, however much time you can put aside in a day. And I feel like people have more time these days, but we exactly. <laughs> put it to good use. <laughs> yeah. And then there's different supplements that I use that help calm the vagus nerve because again, I know not everything that helped me will help everyone, but like L-theanine was a huge thing for me for panic attacks and anything that increases GABA and that includes like some probiotics, um, you know, anything that lowers inflammation. So that's like omega-3 and 6 balance. Um, there's obviously gargling, gagging, humming, um, anything that's activating the back of the palate because that's innervated by the vagus nerve. And a huge one, which I'm actually waiting for a little watch that I ordered, but I have um, heart math, which is like mm -hmm. a little um, sensor, you, you've used it, yeah, um, yeah. that you clip on and it, it looks at the vagus nerves also responsible for heart rate variability. Mm -hmm. So the more variable our heart rate or the better coherence we have, the better um, vagal tone that we have. And I swear when I first put that thing on years ago when I got it, and I have that for every athlete because there's a big heart rate variability and then uh, athletic performance. I bet they love to see that um, data as when well. When I put that on, I was always in the red and the red means you're not <laughs> in coherence. And, and you know, I still struggle with it some days, but um, yeah, so those things, cold showers, um, cold, any cold on the face or even ice over the vagus nerves. People even have those face rollers of ice that they use for actual wrinkles, but it's actually really um, beneficial for uh, the vagus nerve for again lowering inflammation a even something like as a chiropractor when people have like sciatic nerve like issues because they have a disc like it's one of the things where ice is like hugely effective for like calming down that nerve and getting better um, tone in it um, and I've probably missed some because we're using just like you just pick the ones that work the best yeah you've you. given a lot of different yeah, tips there uh, and different some tips. free ones um, and obviously some of the products I'll link in the show notes as well so that people can refer back to them. Um, I heard of the, I heard of yeah. the brain tap through Scott Falsgren. I interviewed him a couple of weeks ago. He's the better health guy. He works a lot with mold and oh, yeah. wine and he thought that that was a really yeah. effective, um, product. But I did want to ask while well, we've got a chiropractor on, I think I've spoken to a few chiropractors before, but we haven't really gotten into what it is. So could you just give an overview as to what chiropractic is and is there specific conditions or symptoms that people could benefit from using it with? For the manual side of chiropractic? Yeah. yeah. Um, so chiropractic literally means like healing with your hands. Chiro refers to the hands. Um, and, you know, there's different techniques that different chiropractors use i use a, a, an amalgamated technique where it's like acupuncture soft tissue adjustments um all kind of in one and like i said i use it a lot for athletic performance but like you know as far as like any sorry going back to vagal tone i miss like any type of touch like mm. massage scalp massage um even adjusting like anything that helps the neck be better aligned like getting the whole spine in line that helps your vagal tone a hundred percent. So, um, 
you know, you can use chiropractic based on the type of practitioner in your, in your areas, or you can look for ones that use like kind of that combined approach for any kind of aches and pains. Um, you know, uh, like everyone thinks that it's only the spine and the back, but it's not. It's like if your ankles sore or your, your tennis elbow or your shoulder, like that, anything like that, we, I personally address, but it's, it's so hard to address as like a whole, um, realm because there's so there's craniosacral therapists mm -hmm. there's people that are like you know so I, I would say um, I always like more than one modality so if you have find someone that uses multiple modalities I think that that approach to health but for any kind of aches and pains but also like anxiety um, you know it, it helps along the journey with everyone that we work with like any type of even hormone stuff, hormones and acupuncture. Like I done, I've done some pre and post um, acupuncture for people who were doing in vitro, um, you know, and that was like the only thing they did different after having five failed in vitro. So for implantation, for ovulation, there's like because it's um, it just it's helping the body come back to homeostasis. So exactly. I think that anywhere that you can, yeah, like have those kind of things come together. Those are the people I get the best results with are the people that I have hands-on time with and the people that were doing all of this internal work. So mm -hmm. that's a, a pretty mm -hmm. good way that I think I can put it. Yeah. And it really is a holistic approach. So you're not just telling them to eat this perfect diet and just take a bunch of supplements. You're also looking at their emotional health and the structural being. Yeah. Are they in good relationships? Are they being exposed to glyphosate and heavy metals? So that is true holistic healing, which I absolutely love. Exactly. Yeah. And we didn't really touch on, obviously, you know, childhood traumas and like working on getting through those because we all have traumas, no matter, it's all relative how big or small, but they affect our physiology. So, I mean, that is, is, is hugely important. And, you know, mostly, um, uh, like even for me, I feel as I got healthier um, in my from a gut and vagal tone perspective, I felt like I could deal with those things more and things that I'd blocked out and didn't want to face and think about because they made obviously made me worse. Uh, you're it, you get stronger and then you can actually overcome them and then your health even goes higher. Like yeah. you attain higher health yeah through that as well ways i think that it's hard i think it's hard to start there i think it's some, for me personally i think that you have to get people out of the rut and then and then they start to grow on a like spiritual level and, and facing down like things that 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 bog down their physiology and maybe even make them more of a of a breeding ground for pathogenic parasites or whatever else we talked about you know or not be able to deal with heavy metals because we all are exposed to these chemicals like some people don't get sick and like you know those people if you really look at them they've got that mental aspect where they're just a little bit more calm i, I think <laughs> i've noticed exactly um yeah you can spot them from a, a mile away those people who are protected and safe a little a little bit safer um, but i'm glad that you did mention that that trauma and the stress um, and when we say trauma, people think that I mean like rape or abuse or neglect or like more no, serious things, but it could be, um, mm -hmm. could you give some examples of like small traumas and stresses that could be affecting physical health? I mean, breakups, friendships not going well. I mean, feeling alone is traumatic, you know, um, childhood trauma, like something that shaped who you are and childhood trauma. I mean, just like feeling unincluded in a certain like those are like traumas that build up I mean uh, those are that's something small and then there's obviously people have had other bigger ones like like rape or attacks or this and that and you know those are more obvious so sometimes like people go into therapy for them and maybe face them more often than like you know or people like trauma to you can't get pregnant that's traumatic mm -hmm. there's different different yeah and going through yeah, health issues like, that that period yeah, of time exactly. that you had the chronic diarrhea and digestive issues that is a trauma in itself oh yeah it was traumatic and like you know now i can laugh at situations and i think that's what's made like a lot of the guys like trust me but like i was to the point where here i am i'm traveling um to see an nfl player and i'm in the car 
in between two huge NFL players, like for football players, but American football. And, you know, one guy driving and my stomach starts going like, oh, and no. I'm like, <laughs> like, you know, like instantly like sweating. I'm like, oh my God, what if I crap my pants? Like sitting in between these two right now. And like, I've had to get like pull over, like I've had mm. to have them pull over and run in and like, I've had to be like really honest and really vulnerable with them. Um, but it's embarrassing, obviously, like no one wants to like feel that way or like, obviously no one wants to crap their pants, but you know, I was it at happens. that point, like <laughs> I told it, I tell people I had juvenile incontinence. <laughs> it was awful. Well, thank you so for being bad. so honest so, and sharing your story with us all. Yeah. <laughs> and I do want to finish up with a few more questions about you personally. Um, so the first one is out of all of these products that you mentioned, is there one of them that you couldn't live without? Oh, this is such a hard question, but for me, because Tudka was so huge, but then I wouldn't have said that if I couldn't have already done Mimosa Pudica. So can mm. I say two? Yeah, you can have two. <laughs> Para, Para One or Mimosa Pudica and Tudka are my, my favorite. Great. So is there a book that, or a resource that you can recommend so if people wanted to learn more about parasites or um, kind of gut health, the vagus nerve, is there a resource that we can include in the show notes? Yeah, and I mean, I'm working on it. So I have my, on my website, we're getting way more, we recorded videos, we're starting to get things out because to be honest, all of my business started from like word of mouth marketing. I had literally like a shell of a website for years. And you know, one of the things about being locked down is being able to work on the back end. And so that's what I've been doing. And you know, I'm going to start posting more in, in depth on Instagram, but yeah, we, they can go to my website at healyourgutfirst.com, but um, it's going to get better and better. Perfect. And what's something that you do daily to stay in hormonal harmony? So one thing I do daily is, oh, I have my reishi coffee. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, and is that the king I, coffee? I mean, I wake up now. And, what? Is that king, king yeah. coffee? Oh, perfect. I love that as well. Yeah, sorry. That's another thing I love too. So I think that was a part of my, my really good immune system as well. Um, it, yeah. So, and I just love how it tastes with my, with my nut pod in it. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys have nut pods there? No, I know what they are though. It's just okay. like, it's just like, yeah, coconut milk and almond milk with like some vanilla, not like actual vanilla in it. It's so good. Um, and then I've, I've done my red light now every morning. So that's helping my mitochondria. And when you help your mitochondria, you're helping your hormones. So those are some things, but I'm sure there's more. And I'm just, I just try to not stress. I'm trying to give less, you know what, just. Yeah. Yeah, bad word <laughs> In, insert, <laughs> yeah. yeah and you know yeah and just do what I have to do to get the word out on health for people and like start to actually like have a voice and I think that that's protecting my hormones than staying quiet because I think that our power is in our is in our gut and our vagus nerve and fixing those two things are so powerful and then our hormones get to follow exactly you're opening your um, throat chakra activating my throat, throat chakra, chakra with yeah. very very closed so mm -hmm. yes it feels good very common problem these days unfortunately for women and no wonder there's a lot of thyroid yeah. issues so just a good of good course. connection there well thank you so much could you let us know on instagram where to find you is it the same the same oh, yes. is it the vegas clinic it's at you know, there's there's a Vegas clinic at Vegas Clinics uh, is the is my company one, but mine is at Doctor S Canistrero. Okay. I think I'm going to change into something easier like okay. Doctor Stephanie or something. But right now it's actor at Doctor S Canistrero. Perfect. Well, I'll, I'll include all of those in the show notes for those who are um, kind of out and about at the moment and they just want to click on a link that will be included. But thank you so much, Stephanie. I feel like we have a lot of similarities and we kind of love the same things. So I really appreciate your time and I know that you're super busy. So I appreciate you sharing your story and some of the, the knowledge that you have with us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's so nice to talk to you and, and just grow that community of people that are on the same path. It's amazing. Absolutely.